Heavenly Father, it is good to be gathered together here today in, in your house, in your place, where your Holy Spirit is with us, among us, and in us. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for the time that we have together. Thank you, Lord, for the strength to be able to come and, and to worship you, to lift up praises to your holy name, to remember all of your care, your compassion, and your concern for us. To be thankful, Lord, for Christ who gave his life for our sins that we might live with you forever. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we, we are in awe of your, your majesty and your power. Lord, we know that you are the creator of the universe. We know, Lord, that your hand is upon our lives. We know, Lord, that you can reach into the lives of those who are on our prayer list and, we, and with your power, Lord, restore them, to give them the help that they need. We thank you, Father, from the bottom of our hearts for those who've gone on to be with you. We thank you for the promise that came through Christ that unites us with you through eternity where all is perfect, where there's nothing besides joy and peace where the scriptures tell us that the Lord wipes away every tear from our eyes. Heavenly Father, pour out your spirit upon us here today. Let us feel your holy presence as we celebrate and remember the day of Pentecost. Lord, we feel your strength inside of us. We feel your spirit. We trust it, Lord. It comforts us. It helps us. It guides us. It strengthens us. Let us feel your holy presence both in the words that we sing and the words that we hear. Help us, Lord, to be all that you've called us to be in the world that we are living in, that we might be able to transform this world in, into a body of believers that looked only to you for guidance and for hope. Be with us now in this hour of worship. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see all of you here today. We want to welcome all of those who are joining in with us as we gather here together at Old Bethel. It is our abiding hope and prayer that as we are able to be heard by others throughout our community and in the surrounding area that God's grace is upon them, God's hand is upon their lives, and they can feel indeed the Lord's Holy Spirit moving inside their souls. Uh, we want to welcome you to this morning's service. We want to thank Jack and, and the radio station for, you know, Jack takes a lot of time, gets us on the radio, gets us on the TV, on YouTube and Facebook. And that, that takes, I learned when we had the COVID stuff, some of that takes more time than you think. And so, so appreciative of having that. But again, it's, it's our ministry. It's a ministry that allows us to reach into people's lives. And it is our hope that those who hear us indeed feel the hand of God upon their lives. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Brother Steve. We're going to be uh, singing out of the celebration hymnal this morning. So if you get that hymn out, uh, hymn book out, and turn to hymn number 563, we're going to all stand and sing, Open My Eyes That I May See. 563.
Let's remain standing for our affirmation of faith this morning. It's in your bulletin. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father Almighty, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth an example of our blessed Lord to the end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is hymn number 510. 510, and it's called Heaven Came Down. This time for ushers will come and receive this morning's regular offering followed by our building fund offering.
may be seated. Our hymn before Brother Steve uh, comes and preaches for us this morning is hymn number 548. 548. Hey, Mason, you want to sing Jesus Loves Me right quick? Well, come on. Let's go sing. Mason, you want to come sing with me? Let's sing Jesus Loves Me right quick. Come on. I need your help. Come on up here. I need your help. I've got you a book, okay? You coming? So, so you're going to sing from there? All right, we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me for the little ones this morning. All right, this is for you, okay? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones should him belong. They are weak, but he Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Brother Steve. If you have your Bibles with you and would like to join with me in reading, this morning we'll be reading from Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from he heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. 
Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes, Iliamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia and Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others, mocking, said, They are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what is spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his words. Many who were there at that moment that day had seen what had happened to Christ. They saw how the world around them had rejected what God had planned through Jesus. At the time of the writing of this, this passage, it was not easy at all. In fact, I suppose it would be very fair to say it was at a time when it was dangerous to be an advocate for anything that Jesus had said or done. It would be extraordinarily hard to have found the courage to admit that one even knew Jesus, let alone believed in anything that he had done around them. While we are given stories of Jesus returning to the disciples to encourage them to continue the work he had begun, we can be equally sure that even though they were working to be faithful, they were still a group of men and women who were very apprehensive. Apprehensive about all that, how things might turn out from this point on. I can easily imagine how they, they must have felt, wondering at each turn, Wondering at each turn what the people they were surrounded by were thinking of these people who had found and believed in a new way. Wondering if they saw them as heretics and, or, and religious zealots led astray by a cunning and gifted speaker in the person of Christ, forming this new cult even in their own midst. These people, I seriously doubt, had any comfort or confidence at all. Brave and inspired would not have been a good word to describe any of the followers of Jesus during this period. Comfort and assur assurance would, would have had no place in, their, in any of their discussions. And I suppose like many other human beings, they were thankful that Christ had appeared to them, speaking words of encouragement to them. But at the same time, still lost. Still lost in what the world would do with them. The moment they began to assert Christ's teachings were right and perfect and, and from the lips of God. As we read this story and as we see this story in the scriptures, that is who these people are at the moment of Pentecost. They were like scattered sheep, uncertain of what the future held for them, uncertain if they had a future at all, uncertain how the, how the world would accept them or, or receive them. Especially if, if they were brave enough to assert that and advocate that, that Christ was indeed the, the Son of God, that Jesus possessed the power to save and redeem the world, that Jesus' teachings and, and his revelations were valid and, and would lead to the best understanding of how God was at work in their lives. They had to be at a place where they assumed their community and their world was not going to be willing they were not going to be willing participants in the plan that God had for the world and revealed through Christ. It was a tough time to be 
a follower of Jesus. It was an uncertain time as to how to go forward. But God knew that. The Lord knew that. And he knew what a challenge it would be for those who had seen. For those who had seen and witnessed what had happened to the words and the, and the work of Christ. God knew the apprehension that they would face. God knew the fears that would, would consume them. God knew how they felt. God knew that they might feel in, inadequate and unable to be what Jesus needed them to be. God knew that there would be challenges that they would have to face, not just in the world in its ways, but within in themselves as well. They were like everyone else. They were flawed human beings capable of looking and being the part of God's people at one moment, but later finding themselves having strayed from the calling and the purpose that God had given them. Jesus was going away. He was going to his Father. And in his absence, there would be a need. There would be a need to provide an everlasting presence that would serve as a, help, a helper, a, a comforter, and a source of inspiration. Not just to sustain them, mind you, but to, but to empower them. To empower them to, to carry on with the message that would transform the world. They needed God's sustaining holy presence to give them uh, the strength and the courage that it would take to minister in the name of Christ and live in the world that they were living in. It would take a holy presence sent from above to give them the strength and the hope and the ability to cope with a world that would often be hostile to the message of Christ. It would take God's holy presence to help them navigate even through their, their own lives to remind them of God's faithfulness to be with them in and through all things that life would bring their way. Now, Jesus had been the rock upon on which they stood. He helped them make sense of all the things they face. He offered them encouragement and power to face the world whenever the world was winning or whether it was losing at the moment. And so it came. So came the promise from Christ. Jesus had promised. Jesus had promised them all that he would not leave them orphaned. He would not leave them without the coming of God's presence upon them. He even went as far as to, to tell them that they would do greater things than he had done because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The scriptures say it was like a, a wind and with it flaming tongues that rested upon them. The power of the living God swept over them, and from the throne of God came the power and the courage to serve Christ in the world that had poorly received them. The fear that had, had kept them in the shadows was, was gone. And if you read the scriptures, if you go on a little deeper in the book of Acts, you'll find that there was no, no greater transformation in anyone than the, the transformation of, of Peter. Not just in new, the new confidence that he felt in his service to Christ. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, God had gifted him with words. Powerful words. Words that were fearless yet hopeful. He went from the, the denier he had been to the very bold evangelist that Jesus, Jesus had seen in him in the years before. He went from being gripped by fear to taking hold of his fears to preach and teach what God had called him to do. He was once like shifting sand blown to and fro by the cruelty of the world and those who occupied it. But he became the very rock that Jesus said he would be. It was the Holy Spirit abiding in him that led him to that transformation. Not just equipping him with courage but with bold, articulate speech that inspired thousands of others to stop and to listen and to believe in Jesus. Peter went from hiding from the Hebrew leadership to defying their call for him to be quiet and stop preaching Christ. He went from denying Christ to standing before the priests and the leadership who had devised the means to destroy Christ to saying to that same bloodletting crowd without hesitation, I will choose to listen to God and not to you. 
Spirit not only fell upon Peter and created an extraordinary evangelist bent on changing the world regardless of the risks that he would face, but it fell on others as well. And it equipped them. It equipped them to tell the story of Christ to people who had not heard it or understood it. God gave them the power to minister to people whom they had, whom they had never known. He gave them language that allowed them to relate uh, to the world around them. God gave them the power to bear witness to, to God's grace and, and love and the story of Christ and his passion so that they could begin the, the work of redeeming the world, of bringing the world into relationship with their creator. Through them, God was, was branching out. He was branching out through the people he had inspired through the Holy Spirit, Spirit to, to bear witness to what he could do in another person's life. God was helping them, equipping them, comforting their fears as he made them ready to be sent out into the world they lived in. And they did. They did do greater things than even Christ had done. Jesus' ministry and work had only penetrated a, a tiny area around his own homeland. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, their work, their work reached into an entire world until the entire world had an opportunity to believe in the same God that you and I believe in and serve. All of this was made possible by the power of God's Holy Spirit poured out on men and women who before were not sure what the next day would bring them. Through the Spirit, they found the power to overcome their fears, to speak of Christ to the world around them. We have been given power from on high. All of us. All of us who are here. Every one of us in this church have received the, the same holy power. God gave it to us. It was that thing, it was that, that voice inside us that led us to the moment in which we professed that we believe in Christ. It was God's holy presence that stirred us into the relationship we have with Christ at this very moment. It is God's Holy Spirit that at this very moment continues to sustain us in our faith. Its presence is our comfort when the world is too rough and life brings challenges that we haven't the strength to fight alone but with the spirit the, the strength to face and defeat those things it is the same spirit that keeps us hopeful and filled with the promises of God's grace and love no matter what we find going on in the paths of our lives God sent his Holy Spirit to us to all of us it is our ever-present comforting reminder that we are always held in the hand of God and protected by His love. It is the power of God to remind us of all that Christ said to us and did for, did for us. It has the power to remind us of, of who we are and the length that God would go to redeem us from our sins. It is that holy power that calls us to the mission and the purpose of Christ, calling us to tell the, the story of Christ to a lost and perishing world. The Holy Spirit of God is with us and in us forever. Jesus did not leave us orphaned, did he? Jesus left us equipped with God's power from on high. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God lives in each of us. His presence is yet another one of Christ's promises kept. Kept for the children of God kept for all of us. So yes, God truly is with us. God truly does live within us. Let me close with the words of Paul Birchold. He pens, Holy Spirit, we now rejoice. Your wisdom helps us, makes our choice to choose the path that Jesus shows, to see things as God sees and knows. Holy Spirit, we now delight. Your understanding brings the light. Make easier to comprehend God's truth and grace, life without end. 
Holy Spirit, you are God's hand. By counsel, life is daily planned. Help us value the gift of time to journey on to heaven's climb. Holy Spirit, be praised more still. Your fortitude makes strong our will, not in ourselves or human might, but by your strength and your holy light. Holy Spirit, you enlighten by knowledge with your joy brighten, not facts or figures and all the rest. Talking with God, that's how we know him best. Holy Spirit, gift from above, piety fills our hearts with love. You unite each family member. We're God's children. We will always remember. Holy Spirit, temple within, all of the Lord keep us from sin. May our motives always be pure. God's life and love in us, let it endure. Holy Spirit, how can we bless? Thank you enough the truth confess. We adore you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. All of you united as one. Today we, we celebrate Pentecost. The power of the living God the power of our living God that has been entrusted in us. It is our strength. It is our comfort. It is our help. It is our reminder that God is not only with us, but the truth is God is inside of us. A closing. The altar is open for anyone who'd like to come. For any need you have, you have, I encourage you to come at this time. Thank you, Brother Steve. Our closing hymn is hymn number 388. Let's all stand. Spirit of the living God. 